Okay, I'd like to conclude this discussion of support vector machines by talking about three aspects that arise in practice as opposed to the theoretical approach that we've taken. And those three aspects are nonlinearly separable sets, which is a common situation, uh, the use of kernels, and the use of support vector machines for multi-class classification. This will just be an overview without a lot of details. Okay, so as I mentioned, we want to worry about three problems. One is about sets which are not linearly separable. Our whole analysis was based on linearly separable sets. And then I want to talk about two more advanced applications, the use of kernel functions and using SVMs for multi-class classification. So let's start with the problem about non-separable sets. So typically, your, um, the sets that you're trying to find the classifying hyperplane for, they're mostly separate, but there's a few points that are kind of in, on the wrong side of the hyperplane. And one way to approach this, uh, there are different ways of looking at it, but the one that's most closely connected to the geometric analysis that we did earlier, we're going to look for a classifying hyperplane where most of the points are on the right side, but a few are on the wrong side. And we're going to do this by replacing the idea of the convex hull with the idea of the reduced convex hull of a set of points. So the reduced convex hull of a set of points is gotten by taking all of the combinations sum lambda i x i of those points, where the weights sum to 1, but you've added a condition not just that they're bigger than or equal to 0, but they're less than or equal to r. And here r is going to be some parameter between 0 and 1. And what this does is to um, shrink the convex hull inward a little bit. So I've drawn here what happens if you take the convex hull of the set of blue points with the parameter 1 third. And the true convex hull is out here somewhere. And the reduced convex hull is shrunk inwards. If you shrink it as much as possible, eventually you're just going to get the center of mass of the set of points. So it kind of shrinks inward towards the center of mass. Um, that's If you take lambda i, if you take r so that it's um, 1 over the number of points, then um, you get the center of mass. And we replace our analysis of trying to find the closest point between the two convex hulls to finding the closest point between the reduced convex hulls. And you'll notice that some of the points lie outside of the reduced convex hull. And what's nice about this is that Actually, we don't have to change very much. All that we have to do is to go back into our analysis of the SMO algorithm and add a constraint. So you remember we had this situation where we had a quadratic polynomial and we had a value, a constraint value, where delta had to be bigger than that. And now, depending on our choice of r, we're also going to have a constraint on the other side, where delta has to be less than that constraint. It has to be less than or equal to the minimum of r minus lambda i plus and r minus lambda j minus. And if you just redo that analysis that we did and you add the fact that you now have constraints on both sides, so the question is, is the minimum of the quadratic polynomial, where does it fall with regard to the endpoints of this interval, then the same algorithm will find the closest points between the two reduced convex hulls. And just to give you an example, here I've taken um, a pair of green and blue points and I've used reduced convex hulls. And you see that um, we get a hyperplane which does a pretty good job of separating the green and the blue points. There's some blue points on the wrong side of the hyperplane, but relatively few. And uh, so this gives you an approach to constructing a classifier which you can then analyze to see how good a job it does of deciding which points are on the plus side of the, of the uh, hyperplane and which points are on the minus side of the hyperplane. So that's a common approach to um, non-linearly separable sets. But there's a much more general version of support vector machines, uh, which is based on something called the kernel trick. And the kernel trick goes back to a remark that I made earlier in the discussion, where I said that the, the functions that we were working with were quadratic polynomials in the lambdas, and the coefficients were dot products of the various points, the positive and negative points. And throughout my analysis, we use the Euclidean dot product. 
But if you go back and look carefully at that analysis, you can replace that inner product by any symmetric positive semi-definite inner product. Basically, you can say that as long as it's linear, bilinear, that xi plus or minus dotted with xj plus or minus is anything you want, um, and you can make, you can redo the analysis. And it gets a little bit more complicated and you have to think about things slightly differently. And so I'm not going to go into the details, but um, the software can do this. And one way to think about what's going on is that you're embedding the points in a high dimensional space, possibly by a nonlinear map. And then in that high dimensional space where you've done that embedding, you find a hyperplane which separates the embedded points. There are a number of commonly used kernels. Two of the most commonly used ones are a polynomial kernel where you, um, one way to think about what you've done there is you, you, you take your features and you replace them by the features and the features squared and the features cubed and the features to the fourth, let's say, if you're looking for fourth degree polynomials. And that gives you a high dimensional embedding of your original points. And then you look for a separating hyperplane in this higher dimensional space, which can be interpreted as a, poly as, as a separating curve, which is actually a polynomial. Um, but because of the kernel trick, you can actually do this in the original dimensional space. You don't need to actually compute this embedding map. And the other commonly used kernel is called the radial basis kernel, where you arrange the distance to drop off like a normal curve between points. And you have some parameters. You have a variance parameter you can change. And this kind of kernel tends to try to, um, it treats points that are close together. It, 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 it makes points that are a little bit farther apart, much farther apart. It spreads out some of the data and um, gives you yet a different approach to classification. So just to show you what this might look like, um, here I took just a random collection of points. Uh, some of them are um, were these, these points here, which have a thicker uh, line around them. And others, these are all points over here are all brown, and the points over here are all blue, except that there's some blue points on the brown side. And I used a cubic polynomial kernel. And the effect is to construct not just straight line that tries to separate these points, but a curvy line. And a curvy line can do a better job. So by using these kernels, you can actually make not just supporting hyper, not just uh, classifying hyperplanes, but classifying curves, which can then do a better job of separating your data into the two classes. Again, the software can do this um, pretty transparently. And the last remark I want to make is that you can, uh, in fact, use support vector machines to do multi-class classification if you have more than two classes. Um, but the most common way to do this is to use what's called many against one classification. So you take one class and you put everything in another class and you reduce it to a binary classification problem and you make a bunch of classifiers which distinguish between each pair of classes. And then you have to have some method for deciding. Basically, each class classifier is going to tell you where your, whether your point is in a class or not in a class. You may need some way to vote or decide among these different classifiers what, um, what result you're going to take. Again, I don't want to get into this, but um, the software is capable of um, constructing these multi-class classifiers. And if you go on and learn more about convex optimization and support vector machines, then uh, you can get a much closer look at a lot of these topics. That will be the last word on support vector machines.